Good evening, everybody. I'm going to talk um, with my higher self today, a version of, of my higher self that I recently come across. It's one that revealed itself to me in more detail. I guess it's always been there, but it's recently come to me in more detail. And he actually told me his name and what he likes to be called is Narente. Narente. It's different. I don't normally get names, so it's a big deal to me. <laughs> Narente is, uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of like a light language thing. It's funny because um, a higher self is always trying to tell me its name, and uh, it was never able to speak it. And then I started doing light language, and recent, and then last last night I was doing a journey and. It, uh, it came up while I was doing light language and he called himself Narente. So I'm going to do a journey into Narente to see what he has to say to you. And one thing I did know that he did not speak English to me. He didn't speak anything except light language. So he might speak to me in what I would say English, but it's a series of it's how I interpret the sounds that are coming into my head. And that's what I think light language is so pure, is because when we speak, when we interpret English, it's very limited to what can be said and the energy that can be passed to the words. But if you use a language that the energy passes through easier, more easily, it becomes more better. So. You could say the light language I use is from my higher self, so it's a language that my higher self speaks to me. So I always look at it as a soul language, a language that comes from the soul, your soul. Now, it could be a different race that comes and speaks to you, but it still speaks through you. So it is your soul that is speaking, an interpretation of what is being said to you. That is my understanding of light language. So, stating that, let's see what he has to say. Just give me one moment. There's, I'm standing, how would you say, in an open field, and there's like something just cuts space and then rips it like this and when it walks through and when I look at this being it's huge it uh, is white energy lots of white energy energy that says makes up all colors the wings are not typical angel wings because I see this as a huge angel and the wings itself are not feathers they are infinite energies that flows constantly in different layers so as you walk in they're all see-through and they're always constantly moving but there's so many different dimensions to it so when you look into it it just you get lost in the movement and if you go physically like spiritually into that space it just continues on and 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 on. It just keeps going. It goes on and on. It's interesting. It's very very cool because you don't actually, when you walk into the wings, you don't actually find an end. It's just an infinite space. And I see his eyes as flames, white flames, and his hair as white flames. And he holds a huge, massive, two-handed flaming sword. And it is all pure white. This is a pure white version of my higher self. And he calls himself Narente. And he recently showed that part of my own soul. He actually cut into my heart and allowed the energy to flow outwards with his sword and it basically created 
like almost like he, I became him, a reflection of him. So he stands there, he's got one knee in the ground, he's looking down at me, and he says, why? And when he says why, it echoes through everything. The ground shakes, the whole earth shakes, it actually cracks open and, and bursts into a massive explosion of light. That was for all of you. That's all he says is why. And it has so much meaning behind it. It's just impossible to put into words. He just stands up. He takes his sword and pushes it into the ground up to the hilt and it, and it basically splits the world in half and he pushes it apart. Just like literally pushes the whole world in two parts. And he says, what part do you deserve to walk on? And you look behind you, it is, it is like literally heaven on earth. And then the other part turns into a desert, a blackened desert of death. So do you deserve to walk in the desert of death or do you wish, or, or a form of heaven on earth? What do you believe you deserve? Are you going to answer that question truthfully? And I say, don't all people deserve to be on the side of heaven? And he looks at me, he says, why do you say that? Because every single soul comes from heaven. And every single soul has chosen to be on this earth at this time. Even the dark souls are light souls that have lost their way. So they all deserve to go to heaven. Then a man comes behind me and says, well, that is the most ridiculous thing that I have ever heard. Everyone goes to heaven. Let them burn in hell. Let them suffer. Let the whole world die. They all deserve to stay. I am the one that deserves to go to heaven. I am righteous and all of you are sinners and you will all die because of you are sinners. You will never be forgiven. Instantly, that man goes to walk into heaven and turns into darkness and becomes a tree in the desert. He will be there for many lifetimes to come because he does not see, he does not see with his heart. He does not think with his heart. He is lost. So how do we save that man so he can come to heaven? Does he deserve to come to heaven? That man has cut off your head for what you believed in. That man hung you. That man crucified you. That man raped you. That man molested you. That man deserves to go to heaven or does he deserve to rot in the darkness, the wastelands for eternity? What do you think he deserves? Joseph, do you still think he deserves 
to go to heaven. And I say yes when he learns to let go, to bring himself back into balance, to forgive himself, then he deserves to go back to heaven. Because all of us are light and dark and all of our parts deserve to become in one and balance. So we all can walk through the gates of heaven together and not as one individual condemning the rest. So is there a heaven and is there a hell? I ask that of you. What do you say to that? He stands up straighter, straight as an arrow, and pulls his sword up out of the ground, the earth slaps together. This is the world we live in. This is the choices you have. Heaven and hell or a figment of everyone's imagination. It is what you wish it to be, but then it becomes what it is, and what is, is different than everyone could imagine. Everyone has their own idea of what heaven and hell is, but what is it really? It is a space of pure love, Forgiveness, understanding, hope. So what is that? What is that to you? And what is it, is it to me? What is it to your higher self? He actually takes the sword and swings it through the air and sticks it through himself. And he falls down to his knees. He pulls the sword out and red blood pours out onto the ground. A pool of red blood mixed with almost like milk substance. It pools down to my feet. Now it's surrounding me. Now I'm on an ocean, a violent ocean of blood. I fly up above, but I am pulled back down onto the raft that I'm standing on. The sun comes out, the whole ocean of blood turns to just a still ocean now. It is now vast and bigger than, well, it's like the size of any ocean, I guess. It's huge. You can, as far as you can see in every direction, there is nothing but perfectly still red blood. He breathes in and breathes all the blood back into himself. And he says, this is what happens to the souls on earth when they choose to kill one another, they choose to hurt one another. It creates blood, 
chaos and storm and then absolute stillness and death. A cycle that will continue until you choose to change. But how many people on this earth are willing to change? I look back at history. Things have changed, but things also remain the same. You just put a nicer band-aid over it. People say that we are free, and I say that you are not. If you are free, then go live somewhere else in the world. If you are free, walk down to the supermarket and take some food. If you are free, don't show up for work. If you are free, stop paying your bills. It's a question as well as a fact that none of us are free until we die. But what happens if you had freedom on earth? It would be a beautiful place to live, especially if people would treat each other with respect and dignity and love. This is my message for you. but it's a common message, isn't it? A message that we keep hearing over and over again, over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Why does the spirit world keep telling you this? You keep seeking answers. We give you the answers, but you still seek more answers and we give you the answer. You seek answers, even more answers, and more answers and more answers but you never listen to the answers that you already have received. It's not good enough. The answers aren't what I want to hear. I want somebody to come, come down and take away all the bad people in the world instantaneously so that the world will finally be in peace. I want the rapture to happen. I want the zombie apocalypse to happen. I want a virus that wipes out almost everybody on earth so I could be able, only a few people and be alone with just a few people so I can finally be free. Where would be the purpose of that? Why would we destroy the whole world just to have a few people? We've heard that this has happened in the past. So we long for that moment that I could be Noah and I could start a new world, a new life in exactly the way I want with a wife and kids and all the animals that I choose to take where God has chosen to show me and take put on my ark. And people say, it's just a story. What is it? It's a story of a new beginning. It's a story of hope. It's a story of a human race that thrives out because they know they are not free. So how do you become free? By following your heart and believing in yourself, believing in others, and to follow your true purpose your true longing 
Respect yourself. Respect others. The list goes for a very long time. No so ka fa na hi so. Nora na hi na ka sa. No ruste ka na hi. Anna hurante. Anna sotote. Manahasa. I kora in tai manahi. Dora kana sahi kamo. Ora na sahi. Na kana horanai. He naia sora. Nasa kantai. No kora satai. Nasurantai. Nasa kantora sanai, naha nahura nai, nama nahotante. I will try my best to be patient, to be the best person I can be. Ho kosantai. Give myself the strength. Tiyanaha Tore, the courage and the love and respect that I deserve. Hum Bayi Kasa, Anayasa Korahiana, Ayasa Torahi. Anta kiko manai Anaurantai asakara Anahi fontai seika Anahosantai Anta manahi Orasatai Ura mana isu karai Antai orantai Hianahanum Aisakarori Anta mana hose Nakasataye Morora Naisa no ko sorry asantai asaka hurantai anasi saka horanahi kataruwe nasana kiso komanahai hi anasoko sakantai Iyana sature antai oranaiya anayasa kanohore iyasa kanahomanai Ia sakara norite ia Anta saya monohore Ia nasa kanta ia monore Nasaya Anahika saraporai Ia saka nor soranta in te hae. 
Orso Kantai Naraya Hiya Saka Nahota Yesa Nahiya Torinte Orso Kana Tayaye Antai Orasanaya Ora Saintai Sokotanai Antamatora CK Absorb the love of the light, absorb the love of the universe, absorb the light of the Creator, allow it to flow through you, awakening your higher self. So you are now a reflection of your higher self. Nora Sanahi Akatora Antai Accept the love into your heart and expand it to all the universe, to all the souls on earth, that they may feel, may they be resurrected, may the souls of the lost be freed. May your soul be healed and come into balance. May the gates of heaven open and invite all the souls into heaven. And let the light shine down everyone that wishes to share the love to the earth and to the universe. No asanae Ora saka nahi arae ana ora Nai se kama no so kasaia Ora sanaya sakura sikura manai Asanai Amanoa Sora Sai Kanasori Teya Orasanahi Korasapanahi Teye Osokanahi Amano Toria Anasakura Tai Sukofan and te ora iso kanahi samana ai osana ai Ora iana kana hosoki nahi nana koso aisa nahi hosoka nasai 
Hanai Hayamanore Ursanahi Akatara Manai Ayasaira Horso Kisanai Asanatayai Amonai Uso Kasai Usora Aisa Osoka Naiseya Naiseya Nuko Santai Isa Kantai Antura Kanahi Satanoto Ntai Okosura Ntai Kantai Asakotora Nanamone Sakasai Okoto Sanai Satakosora Pai Orayahi Aya Oranai Anai so Orai and Aya Orasanai Asaya Nayam Hora Sayam Manohore Anasai Hora Yanomoinga Onai Sorante Urnai Raka no Horai Aniosa Norai Asakarosia no Ayanasaka no Fanahi Anai asaka sore no korantai antaya horai ana horai te 
安泰，可善奈呀，看在何然奈，安奈呀塞他，何然三地。No kuratai na sai taya. Antai sakanai, antoi nansantai, dasantai kumana, mia bonsai. Tai Kondori That was an activation to connect to your higher self to transform to heal the world to create a butterfly of the purest love to send to the rest of the world. Let that butterfly fly to every soul and they will feel the love of the gift that you shared with them today. That's all I will share with you today. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great evening. When you do light language, it creates all kinds of crazy feelings inside your physical body. It creates a euphoria. It's beautiful. It's peaceful. It releases so much within your soul. If you wish to do a service with me, you can visit my website at www.almanrossthewakening.com. And if you wish to view my Northern Lights page, you can go to Northern um, Joseph Bradley Roars. That's Joseph Bradley Roars at Yahoo. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm just messing the last part up. I'm kind of out of it. It's uh, Joseph Bradley Aurora's dot com. Thank you very much. And I wish everyone the absolute best day and week and year and life that they've ever experienced. So going forward, every day is going to be better and better and better. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.